what I wonder is what would the if this Elohim Elohim idea is correct and that, that we have an organizational force which is organizing different cultures around the world, what was going on between the ancient Egyptians and the early Hebrews at that time? I mean, the, Moses leads the children of Israel out of Egypt, we're told in the Bible, but Egypt seemed to carry on in its own way afterwards for at least another thousand years. Um, did they have an Elohim uh, or, or, or but, looking after them? The Egyptians. What about Mesopotamia? Have, and the the Elohim, they don't uh, don't call them Elohim, of course, because it was another language. Yeah. But uh, I think they uh, were the, the same. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew, uh, was Elohim. Mm -hmm. In Mesopotamia, was Ilu or Ilanu. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In uh, Egypt uh, uh, was a other name. Yeah, but the and same that, function. Yeah, but the same function. Yes, yes. The same characteristics. So to cut a long story short, do you interpret these entities as human beings, or yes. what, you interpret them as human beings? So this is where there's a crossover with with my work and your work, um, in the sense that I have advocated the possibility of a lost civilization of some sort. Uh, which originated during the Ice Age and which was destroyed uh, in the global cataclysms okay. that, that brought the Ice Age to an end. Now, um, it, has long, it has for a long time seemed to me that the wisdom and knowledge of that civilization was not lost completely, yes. but it was preserved that there, that there may have been specific groups of people who were charged with carrying that knowledge down yes. uh, into, in, in, into the world. So I can see the... I can see the crossover with... with it's it's, with, uh, it's uh, absolutely possible that Elohim were those. Human beings with special yes, knowledge. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Of higher technology. Now the thing is that we have a very long gap. If we agree on the flood, which is a, another question I want to ask you. Okay. The, the biblical flood is the, is the best, of course, the best known flood myth in the world. Uh, everybody knows about the flood of Noah, whatever their religion is today. Um, everybody knows about the flood of Noah, but not everybody is aware that there are maybe 1,000 other stories uh, that tell of a global flood and yes. a cataclysm that afflicted the earth and that caused great, uh, great destruction and changed things completely. And uh, I've long been of the view that, that the most likely period for that cataclysm uh, is the end of the Ice Age. Okay. Uh, it's a time of tremendous global changes and it's a particular period called the Younger Dryas yes. and it runs roughly for 1,200 years from 12,800 years ago to 11,600 years ago. 11,600 years ago we get a final massive pulse of meltwater which raises sea levels very, very rapidly. It's one of the reasons why I'm interested in the story of Atlantis, actually. Yes. Uh, because that, that is the date, 11,600 years before our time, 9,000 years before the time of Solon, uh, is um, the date that Plato gives for the submergence yes, of, yes. Of, of Atlantis. But, I know. So if, if these calculations are correct, and we're looking at a global cataclysm that, was, that had its final massive... A spasm of disaster 11,600 years ago. That's a long gap uh, to the time of the Hebrews uh, and the exodus from Egypt, which is 1200 BC, 3,200 years ago. So we have about 8,000 years gap. Now, one of the things that my critics find hardest to accept is the idea that a wisdom tradition, that specific knowledge, perhaps even specific technologies, originating with a lost civilization could have been preserved for 8,000 years. This is the, this is, raises... It's absolutely possible. Yes. So talk to me about why it's possible. Yes, yes. Because in, in um, also in the, the, the Egyptian uh, culture, uh, I, I, I read that um, the priest Phoenician, San Cuniaton, who wrote and uh, Eusebio of uh, Caesarea report his, uh, his uh, words and he said that the priest of uh, ancient Egypt uh, uncovered hidden the, the, um, under the myths a true history of an ancient uh, civilization. 
Well, in Egypt, we have entities like this one here and this oh, yes, one here. Yes, 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 these, yes, are not, yes. these are not Horus and Anubis. These are the souls of Pe and Neken. And they, were, they, uh, they are also related to another group called the Followers of Horus. And their um, purpose, specific purpose, as described in the ancient Egyptian text, was to transmit knowledge yes. from the past into the future. That They're a kind of uh, secret brotherhood. They could also be a secret sisterhood uh, because the ancient Egyptians were very, uh, very admiring of powerful women as well. They were, a they were a secret society, if you like. I prefer not to say a brotherhood, a secret society which passed down knowledge from the, from the past into the present. Um, the most difficult thing to believe is that such a secret society could survive for 8,000 years. Often when I'm criticized about that, I point out that... Um, that uh, there are ideas that do last for thousands of years and that, do, and that do continue and that are repeated. Even the idea of the flood is an idea that has lasted for thousands of years. But what's your feeling about the dating of this? Do you, do you accept the notion of a flood more than 11,000 years ago? Or do you prefer yes, it yes, more? Yes. Uh, is there yeah, anything in the Bible? 11,000 years ago. Yeah. It's fascinating but, that, that where, where the Bible says that the Ark of Noah ends up, is Mount Ararat, which is now in Turkey. Yes. Um, although it's, um, it's actually visible from Armenia, you can see the Mount Ararat more clearly from, yes. from Armenia, but it's now, it's now in Turkey. Now, the interesting thing is there's no question whatsoever from a factual point of view that whatever floods took place at that time at the end of the Ice Age, none of them reached the slopes of Mount Ararat. They, yes. they did not. Mount Ararat was never submerged 11,000 years ago or 100,000 years ago. It was, not, it was not submerged. But the idea that survivors of a flood would seek refuge in high places, that makes sense to me. Yes, because also Nicola Damasceno writes in his uh, books that when uh, Noah arrived on top of uh, this mountain, he found here other people. Ah, interesting. Found other people. And these people uh, were afraid to descend. Right. And Noah, with her sons, convinced them to descend. Right. But this is not in the so, Bible. So, this, is, so, this is in some other text. This is in the text of uh, uh, Nicola of Damascus. Right. First, uh, first uh, century before Christ. Right. Right. So it's an exegesis on the Bible. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Right. So, so we How have interesting. A, so he found a, people there already, which is what I would expect. I mean, the reason that Mount Ararat is of interest to me is because of its relative proximity to these sites now being discovered in Turkey. Uh, Gobekli Tepe yes. is also 11,600 years yes, old. Yes, Karahan yes. Tepe is 11,600 years old. Gobekli Tepe is an, another proof of an Igor civilization. I believe it is, yes. I think we're, I think we're looking at evidence for that. Um, but what's fascinating is the thought that the... And this is what uh, archaeologists most oppose, is that um, the thought that knowledge could be preserved within select groups and passed down to the future. That... That, for that to happen for 8,000 years is something that many skeptics find very difficult to accept. But yes, I, I, think, I think that history must be re, re, rewritten. Rewritten, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Because there are too many things that the, the actual the, the, the history is not able to, to explain. Absolutely, absolutely. right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 